Welcome to Dollar Views First Podcast Review for Skyfall. I'm Brian Gillis, Brain Trust, and I'm here with David Hunko. Hey. So, uh, so. We, just, we just saw Skyfall last night, or yesterday morning actually, Matt Nick, because we're cheap asses, we got the early bird. We're very poor. So let's jump into this. Let's talk about some shit. What do you think about the 23rd installment of the James Bond series? I really liked it. I thought they did a good job. They continued this whole line of each Daniel Craig movie is supposed to be a grand reboot, mm-hmm. uh, reimagining of the James Bond character. You know, they dove into his past more than any other movie has ever, so... Yeah, we, we now know that his father, Andrew, and his mother, Monique Delacroix... <laughs> So he was <laughs> half Scottish and half French, you know. <laughs> I'm not sure how that really falls into his, him being England's main guy. But his dad, you know, dug the French ladies. I don't know. So like, what? What if Nicolas Cage? We found out was a talent. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I liked it too. I mean, uh, there's some things that I thought could have been done better. What did what, what What did you find that you didn't like? Well, for for starters, I I really liked the new Q. Yeah, that Andrew Garfield sensibility. He was funny, but he was uh-huh. smart. I could relate to him. Uh-huh. But I, w- I was looking for a gadget, some kind of gadget, not a little pocket transistor radio. That seemed like a Dr. No thing. Well, that's the whole th- This is the first time you see Q. This is in the whole grand reboot of things. This is the brand new Q. This is... They have to go back to, you know, basic, simple things. Maybe if the gun... Instead of just having the handprint recognition, uh-huh. electrocute the guy who tries to shoot it. See, I thought that was impractical because the gun had lights. And you could see and the you lights. you could totally see the lights in the, in I the mean, dark. That's it, a dead it worked, giveaway. It worked with the Komodo Dragon with thing the, yeah, that's because the, you're like, oh, we can't shoot him because well, it's red. Well, if that's the only part of the thing that makes the lights work, why not have like a little noise or something? I don't know. I didn't think the lights uh, in the world of... You know, espionage. I wouldn't feel comfortable with sending my spies if I was. You know, well, I mean, M in this movie didn't give a fuck. Didn't give a fuck about. You, that's about, why you know yeah, you, Sylvia was a badass you, because you find out through Mom the course, was a bitch. Yeah, you find out through the course of a movie that basically the whole thing is about having bad mommy problems. Yeah. Uh, uh, basically, two sides of the coin of whether or not M is, you know, as Bond puts it, a bitch or not. Let's talk uh, the other big problem in the film, product placement. I mean, Sony, I didn't think a.k.a. Was... Columbia Pictures, is known for placing the Sony products in the films, which usually is not a big problem. They've done with the, the two previous Bond films since they had the deal. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the Sony computers, the Sony phones, whatever. I understand that, uh-huh. TVs. But let's talk the Heineken, okay? I thought the Heineken... I didn't mind the Heineken at all. He does have a martini in the movie. Kinda. He doesn't actually ask for a martini. You could, he doesn't even say shake and not stirred. She just shakes they it made and a said, point, you did it. You they did made it the right a point way. of shaking it so that you uh-huh. see that it was shaken. I thought I had no problems with that. Product placement has been a part of the Bond franchise. But this was different. He's in the middle of nowhere, Turkey. He's not in Istanbul. He's just in the middle of nowhere, Turkey, on some beach somewhere, having, you know, the scorpion drinking they, games. You don't think they have Heinekens in Turkey? I don't think they drink Heineken in Turkey Night. Maybe Bond really likes Heinekens, and that's what yeah. he wanted. So and he's the Scottish, French, a lot of, a Dutch lot of, drinking guy? Is that a him? Lot, a lot of people go to Turkey. A lot of people have you know demands for certain beers. Heineken's a very popular beer. They've I think lots a, of people go to that beach. <laughs> they've done a good job marketing que- their beers. Questioning that beach. Why would that beach just have CNN Look, playing in the background? This, just, que- just curious. I have more a problem with Wolf Blitzer and CNN being, you know, broadcast randomly on a flat screen TV, a really nice Sony flat screen TV. That wasn't a nice one. That was a CRT. It was a pre- it was yeah, a it was really... nicer than can be expected at a little beach bungalow yeah. in the middle of nowhere. And they had CNN on that, randomly. I, I don't I don't like that was puzzling to me that Bond finds out crazy shit is going down back home by CNN on this really nice TV in the middle of nowhere. Whatever. Other product placement woes, more so than the Heineken for me, was the the opening, the uh, epilogue, I mean the prologue. No, no, no. Before that, when uh, Eve is asked by M, what's going on? Oh, he's running over some, they look like Volkswagen Beetles. 
They, it wasn't. No, no, no. It was. She oh, what was? She they, crashes into oh, stuff. Okay, and she's, yeah, like, she's like, what is that? A couple yeah. beetles. A couple beetles. Yeah, because they're puny cars. I didn't have a problem with that. Product placement has been a part of Bond since forever. That's just what Bond is. I guess. Um, you know, you have a problem with. Uh, I think it was Kettle One who who had who had the exclusive vodka for forever. I don't know. I don't smear I don't remember that. product placement yeah, and quantum solace. Then again, I don't really remember that movie. Aston, but Aston Martins have been associated with Bond movies for forever. That's and in then, a good way. Though. And then BMW said, "No, you need to stop driving Aston Martins." And for the entire Pierce Brosnan Bond series, he only drove BMWs Those until cool Die cars. Another Day. Those were some cool cars. And then starting in Die Another Day, Mercedes is like, we want Bond, we want cars in the Bond movies too. Now, product placement is a part of Bond. It's a part of movies. It is what it is. I, I don't think it's something to gripe about. Let's get let's get back on the track. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So, what what worked for you in the movie? What, what did you enjoy? What didn't you enjoy? Uh, here's what I enjoyed. I enjoyed. Uh, I still enjoy Daniel Craig's uh, performance. I think. It has been what's carried his, you know, the movies so far up to mm-hmm. up to this point. I like the opening sequence more than I've liked the opening sequences in the other two movies. Yeah, Casino Royale's was the coolest. It was cool, but I like this one better. You know, I wish uh, there was more Bond girl ishness. You know, I thought they got rid of the the Chinese prostitute girl a little early. They had they had two Bond girls. That's good enough. I mean, the the other than Vesper, they're Bond girls have played a really reduced role in the Daniel Craig series. No, the Olga Kurilenko character was like the main. She didn't thing. show up till like halfway through the movie. Well, the movie was like eighty minutes. How fast do you want her to show well, up? This is not a podcast about how bad Quan is. Um, you know, overall the action worked for me. Obviously, Javier Bardem, you know, worked. He was very good. I loved Albert Finney. The be- I thought he was the best part of the whole third act. Welcome to Scotland. Uh, he was a little over the top. I thought that was good. You need over the top in Bond. Well, I, if they sold the house and they sold everything, why would the gameskeeper still be there? What game does he have for keeping? Just, you know, maybe he, may, maybe they hadn't closed escrow yet. Maybe the house was empty. <laughs> there was cobwebs everywhere. Even the guns were gone. Okay, Albert Finney was there. He was there to shoot some shit. Apparently, he was ready for battle before Bond was born. I really like the acting. Uh-huh. I like Dan Drew Dench. Um, really liked... Uh, the poetry thing was nice. Yeah, I like Ralph Fiennes. He was good. I wasn't expecting him to be that good. I mean, I really liked Eve. Naomi Harris was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like the Vaughn girl, Severin. I, uh, I don't even know her name. Yeah, Severin, I think. Uh, and, of course, you know, Javier Bardem. It was good to see him. I... I knew the blonde hair. I knew, I kind of knew what he looked like. Uh-huh. I saw the production stills, uh-huh. but I didn't know that his character was going to be so flamboyant. F- flamboyant is a is a in, good in, word I- in the best way. <laughs> I mean, he was the the sixth uh, village person, <laughs> especially when he dressed up as a cop. That was great. But <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about the fondling scene. Can, uh, hold, hold on a second. Can we talk about uh, when he goes in? And pseudo rapes the girl in the shower. No, I mean he doesn't. He he's doesn't, James Bond. That's, he doesn't, that's what re- James he Bond doesn't does. really rape her because you know he's James Bond and she's you know cool with it. But she's taking a shower and a naked man randomly, inexplicably shows up on her. He's talking about she was ready for him. Don't you remember she had the bucket of champagne, the two glasses. She told him where to come. He, she was waiting for him all night, and then she finally said, well, let's just go. And he surprised her, because he's very debonair and French, I guess. Okay. And <laughs> it, it worked. I liked it. But what I I didn't like, not necessarily, was the fondling scene. I didn't think Javier Bardem... You didn't think the fondling scene was good? It didn't make sense. It didn't tickle you? No. I, I laughed. Everyone laughed. <laughs> How do you know it's my first time? <laughs> I'm sorry, I hey, thought this was James Bond, James Mr. Bond, Super Hetero. Hey, James Bond has to do a lot of things in the line of duty for his uh, country. Was the fondling necessary? No. I don't know. No, definitely um, not. Because you know, It added a little creepiness to Javier Bardem's thing. You know, he's got him tied up, you don't know what he's going to do. Well, I, I thought the movie looked gorgeous. I oh, liked, yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked the, uh, the Chinese boat ride. That was pretty... That was pretty cool through the, um, through the mouth of the dragon. That was nice. The the assassination scene 
the Chinese hotel, not hotel, business oh, yeah, building yeah, yeah. with the, whole, the glass. Uh, I liked I liked the way that looked. I liked uh, that was cool. Yeah, I really liked the uh, Javier Bardem, the Silvia uh, intro scene. When he's just walking up, yeah, to when he's, he comes down. This, yeah, there's that that fluid big shot, one take monologue. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It's, the camera slowly moves over Bond's shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he gets creepier and creepier and more erotic by the second. Yeah, in a good way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I liked it. I, I I I dug every scene that he was in. It's like uh, Sam Mendes. What did you think? I know you have your problems with Sam Mendes. This is, in my opinion, this is Sam Mendes' best film since Road to Perdition. Okay, I agree. But you don't like any of his other artsy shit that he's done. Every Shinnera Road isn't artsy. It's just shit. <laughs> it's just it's bad. <laughs> Like people only saw that because Leo and Kate and, were retained, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they want to see what was going down there. And you know, Jarhead. I don't know why people Michael saw Sh- that. Michael. No, I saw that movie because Kanye West was in the trailer, and I was like, "This looks like it's a good thing." Jesus Watch. You remember that? I do remember that. That's exactly. That's, th- that's the, the whole reason. reason you watched the movie. Yeah, basic and Jake Gyllenhaal, and that was when everyone loved Jamie Foxx too. So it was those three things. Jamie Foxx was good in that movie. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a couple good things about that movie. The whole Deer Hunter scene is hilarious. <laughs> but the rest of the movie is pretty bad. And, I mean, I really like Jake Dillon. All right. Uh, it's, uh... I like it. It's his, it, I agree it's his best movie since Road to Perdition. Um, I think he definitely put his own stamp on this. I think, you know... Uh, everybody's going to want him to direct the next one. It's not happening. You don't know that. Have they ever got someone to come back to direct another one? No, I don't think so. I don't know off the top of my head, maybe. Maybe in the early days. Maybe in the early days, but, you know, I, I think it could happen. No, I think this is going to be the, the Hunger Games thing. You know, Gary Ross comes out, directs a pretty good installment. Twilight, for that matter, too. Catherine Howard directs the first installment, and yeah. then... Harry Potter until they got yeah, to... Yeah, Chris Columbus. Last, so well, no, Chris Columbus directed the first two, though. Yeah, he directed two, then it was Alfonso Cuaron. Well, you, yeah, you know, well, I mean, it's a lot of people. But, I mean, you get someone kind of good to really push a series in a good sure, direction. And once you get a style you like. Yeah, and then you can, you know, sign whoever you want, and the director basically goes like off a, and makes something, whatever they want. Basically they like attention. a TV show. Yeah. I guess. Maybe. I mean, because I mean, Casino Royale and Quantum now... Have kind of be eh, they're, they're kind of no longer relevant. I mean, this is where the series starts. Yeah, this is this this is definitely Casino Royale sets him up as as what they wanted him to be. Bond before Bond. Palm Solis was them trying to make money. Yeah, I mean, well, if you if you look at Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace as two parts of the same story, it's supposed to be Bond before Bond, still rough around the edges. Uh, you know. He's cold. He's not. He's not cold to women yet because he hasn't been betrayed by love. They set that up in Casino Royale, and all that stuff. This one sets Bond up as that cavalier, uh, quippy, fun secret agent guy that we all love who kicks ass. You with know, no gadgets. Though. With well, there will eventually be gadgets in the next one. They'll probably have some kind of gadget. And if there isn't, and if there isn't, there isn't. You know, I thought that radio line was hilarious. Yeah. How much cooler would it have been if, like, the radio, you press the button, and, like, I don't know, it shot a laser at him? No. No. I think gadgets will play a big part in, you know, we've got three more with Daniel Craig, which I think will round out the setting up of the new Bond. I dig it. Thanks for, uh, listening. Thank you very much, guys. This is, a first in a series of many. Remember, dollar reviews, viewing films, one dollar at a time.